Welcome. This is a seasonal practice to support autumn. This is a stronger, more dynamic practice. And you may need some props to support you. You may need some yoga blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can just use books. You may like a blanket also. And you may also like to work with your essential oil, your bergamot essential oil. So take that and we will apply one drop onto our pinky finger which we will then hold with the other pinky finger and apply to this point here in the top of the ear, Shen Men. Bergamot on Shen Men is a fantastic way to start a practice. It is grounding, it is centering. So as you hold this point here, it's an opportunity for you to now close your eyes and take a moment to go inward. Perhaps you start to lengthen and deepen your breath. Allow yourself to become aware of any internal shifts or changes that may already be occurring just from holding this point very gently with your fingers. One of the central practices throughout this program is the awareness of transition and transformation. We are cultivating this awareness of seasonal shifts, the movement from one season to another, and today we will distill that down in that focus into your yoga practice as we focus on the transitions from pose to pose and from breath to breath. Sometimes we see the seasons gracefully sequence into the next and sometimes there is a stop start, a stutter in the transition, but it all counts. And with all of this, there is grace, there is poetry. So today we call on our fluid, graceful, poetic nature. We place our awareness on the spaces between, the fluid spaces between each pose and between breaths. You may now release the hold and if you wish to just inhale the bergamot from your nose there. And with the eyes still closed, take three more long, slow, deep breaths here, noticing the movement at the end of each breath as it turns into the exhale. Good. And then when you're ready, you can drop the chin and slowly open your eyes and let's come to all fours. We'll take our wrists underneath our shoulders and our hips over our knees. Inhale, dropping the belly, gently looking forwards. Exhale, puffing the back to the sky, dropping the face. Good, inhale, belly drops, the face gently lifts. Exhale, reverse the flow. Inhale. And exhale, speeding up a little bit now with your cat cows. Good, pressing down on the tops of the feet there. And now even a little faster, perhaps faster than you really signed up for. Keep going with me. Just creating some warmth to allow the movements to flow. Let's take 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Come to neutral position. And let's take right knee in front of the left knee. Left knee behind the right knee. Making a third foot with your knees. And we'll flip the wrists. So we're going to turn the fingers around to the side and then all the way around to the back. If this is the first time you've done this movement, just take it gently and keep aligning your shoulders right over your wrists here. I'm going to take some circles around to the right with the hips, just rotating all the way around circular movements around to the right. That's great.
So one of the, as you keep moving, one of the uh, visual images that will help us in our practice today is the image of a murmuration. A murmuration is that collection of starlings as they gather before they migrate and they make those beautiful um, gliding, sweeping movements. Good. And let's go the other way. And what happens, what you notice when you watch these birds move is they do so with such grace and such fluidity. And they are ready to turn in a moment. They're, they're what we could call on the edge, but not on the edge in a uh, neurotic sense, but on the edge in a very present and uh, ready, there's a readiness to them. Good, come to neutral. Let's flip our hands all the way around, back to face forwards, tuck your toes, lift your hips, coming into a cross-referenced downward dog. So you're very high on your toes here, your heels are very high, and there's a readiness here to your pose. There's a readiness that you could almost uh, move, launch, transition forward very easily. You can have a little few bounces there on the balls of your feet. Gaze to your hands and bring your left foot, the one that's behind you, all the way round and through in between your hands. If you have to take a couple of movements to get there, that's no problem. Drop the back knee, untuck the back toes. Take the right armpit and um, have it right over the, excuse me, the left armpit and have it right over the left knee here so that you're making good contact with yourself. And when we make good contact with ourselves, we create a sense of security and safety. We're now going to unfold into a lunge. So take your hands forwards and up and lift yourself all the way up into your lunge. Press into the ball of the front foot, the top of the back foot. Lift from your pubic bone to your belly button to your heart. Good, take a couple more breaths here with me. And then framing the front foot, coming back into cross-reference dog, but with the left foot in front this time. So again, we're very ready. We're here on the balls of our feet. And then let's drop the knees. So once more, we are on all fours, but with that third foot, so to speak, with the knees in front of the knees. Flip your hands once more. And then we'll go the other direction now. So moving around to the left. Good. So going to the left first this time. And again, you could have an image of perhaps a clock and that the pelvis was meeting all of those numbers on the clock that we were ensuring that we touch all the numbers on the clock and sometimes there's a few that we kind of glide by. <laughs> Good, let's go the other way. Very good. Let's take three more in this direction. And then return the hands forwards with some relief, tuck the toes, back into cross-reference, downward facing dog. Bring the back foot forwards, lunging, dropping the back knee, right armpit over, right knee this time, and then inhale, unfold yourself, lifting everything up. As you inhale, lengthen the line from the pubic bone to the belly button to the heart. As you exhale, you can gently draw the navel back to the spine. Exhaling, bringing your hands now down to frame the front foot and let's come into a downward facing dog, just a regular dog this time, not cross-referenced, but with the knees slightly bent, you can turn one foot in so the heel comes to the toe and this measures a good hip distance with your downward facing dog. And let's set up our dog as a kind of a home base for us in our practice. So the knees are bent, the heels you can see are still reaching towards the floor. My heels are still moving towards the floor, even though my legs are bent. And what this um, downward dog with bent knees, what this version gives us is it gives us a sense of being ready 
just like those starlings are in that murmuration, ready to move, ready to go. It gives us um, some dynamism to our, to our movement. Good. Very good. Walk the feet now towards the hands. Take two fists to measure between your feet and bend the knees very deeply so you're resting the chest on the thighs and take the hands all the way around behind and hold on to the heels with as much of the forearms resting on the calves as possible. Allow the head to completely drop now with the back of the neck being very long. And take a few breaths here as you flood the kidneys with your breath. You can close your eyes if that feels nice. Notice if your weight is hanging out in the heels or in the toes and you can gently, sweetly rock forwards and back. Again, just allowing there to be a fluid gracefulness to your movement as you take that rocking. And when you feel ready, come to stillness, the midpoint lifting up from the arches of the feet. And then slowly take the hands now in front of the toes. Inhale, lift and lengthen your heart forwards. And exhale, squeeze navel to spine as you fold back in. With a gentle bend to the knees, walk the hands up the front of the legs and roll yourself all the way up to standing. Mountain pose with the palms facing forwards here. Allow your palms to be facing forwards. You can close your eyes. Again, perhaps you take a gentle rock between the toes and the heels, so you're finding a movement forwards into the future, back into the past with your heels, forwards into the future on your toes. And just holding and uh, transitioning between those two places, spaces and time. And come to the midpoint. Come to stillness and notice that even when you come to stillness, lifting from the arches of the feet in your mountain pose, there is motion in the stillness. The heart beats, the blood flows, the breath moves. Inhale, take hands all the way up and overhead to prayer. Travel the prayer down the midline as you fold all the way back down and folding in. Good, inhale, lift and lengthen your heart forwards and then plant your hands and walk back to downward facing dog and then come onto your knees and then please come into child's pose right at the back of your mat and we're gonna move through some salutations. So staying in child's pose for a moment, we're gonna move through some salutations and I'll walk you through, guide you through the sequence. Good, so inhale, coming up, taking hands overhead and then exhale, folding at the hips. Inhale, sneak through to a low cobra. Elbows hug into the ribs. Press down on the tops of your feet. Exhale, travel back through knees to downward facing dog. You can keep that bent knee to downward facing dog. Please gaze to your hands and take your right foot in between your hands. Your left knee comes down. Unfold yourself just like we did earlier. Exhale, frame the front foot, come off of the back knee, come onto the back toes and ping yourself forwards into a forward fold. You can take two fists if you like to measure your hips. Inhale, rise up, sweep the arms around you as if you were gathering all the good energy up and holding it overhead. And then exhale, reverse the flow, folding back down. Take the right foot behind you into a lunge. Unfold. Exhale, frame the front foot, come to downward facing dog. Inhale, please come to high plank. Exhale, drop onto the knees, child's pose. So that's one round of our moon salutation of our sequence. We're gonna do a few rounds together and we'll keep going to create a sense of fluidity and flow to the movement. So as you inhale coming up, hands come up and overhead. As you exhale, crease at the hips and fold forwards. As you inhale, slide through like the crest of a wave. And as you exhale, come to downward facing dog, very safe, stable, steady position. 
Gaze to hands, left foot comes forwards, right knee drops, unfold yourself for a lunge. Exhale, frame the front foot and forward fold, back foot comes forwards. Inhale, rise up as if you are holding a full moon above your head and then exhale to fold all the way back down. Left leg comes back now, right knee bends, unfolding. Exhale, frame the front foot, downward facing dog. Inhale to a high plank. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, crest through like a wave. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right foot forwards, left knee down. Lunge. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, reversing everything now all the way back down. Right leg comes back. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, downward facing dog. High plank. Child's pose. Coming up on a one. Folding on a two. Swishing through on a three. Exhaling four. Inhaling right foot forwards, five. Exhaling forward fold, six. Inhaling rise, 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 seven. Exhale, fold all the way back down, eight. Right leg back, nine. Downward facing dog, 10. High plank or up dog this time with toes tucked to your choice, 11. Child's pose, 12. Take a moment there to breathe, inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. One more deep breath here into your kidneys. Good, we'll take a few more rounds. You can go at your pace. Remembering that visual image of the starlings. So allow your movements to be poetry, become a poem. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, fold. Inhale. Cresting through. Exhale, downward dog. Left leg forwards, right knee drops. Crescent lunge. Forward fold. Rising up. Folding forwards. Left leg back. Downward facing dog. High plank or upward dog with toes tucked, your choice. Child's pose. Let's take one more, inhale, coming up. Exhale, please folding forwards. Inhale, sneaking through. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg forwards, left knee down, rising up. Folding forwards. Rise up, fold down, right leg back, lift through the ring fingers, exhale, downward facing dog, high plank or up dog, and child's pose. Again, take three breaths here, just noticing any shifts that might have already occurred, just through this first 20 minutes of our practice. Good. Inhale once more with me, coming up. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, sneak through, low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
Good. Bend the knees, walk the feet towards the hands now, and take two fists once more between your feet to measure your hip distance. Bend the knees generously and take the center of the palm to the elbow so you're creating a hang for yourself here. Creasing deeply at the hips, lifting the sit bones up even though the knees are bent. And noticing the back of the knee and how that connects up to the sit bones, that line up to the sit bones from the back of the knee. And from the back of the knee down to each heel. Good. Sink the seat now deeply as you pull forward on the elbows, coming to a flat back, even perhaps a gentle arch of your back. So pulling forwards on the elbows, tailbone reaches back. Inhale, now lift the chest, keeping the arms aligned with the ears, coming all the way up for chair pose for a brief, brief strengthening breath. Smile as you then stand all the way up. Bring hands all the way up to prayer overhead. Draw the prayer once more down now into your hands, to your heart, and then fold all the way back down again, please. Turn yourself around now if you're not already so that you're on the long width of your mat, so that the outside edges of your feet are parallel with the short edges of your mat. Good, and then you can take a little bend to your knees and you're gonna take your right hand and cross it over your left ankle. I'm gonna take your left hand and cross it over your right ankle in the front there. And then you're gonna pigeon toe your feet out. So you're gonna widen as far as you can handle, but you're not gonna go further than you can handle and break the circuit. You're gonna keep yourself with your knees bent, connected, fully connected to yourself. You can let the head go. Good. And then please bring out the bottom arm, so that's the right arm. Bring it all the way up to the top, so you're in a little twist here. And then bring that top arm all the way over. You're going to gaze to the fingers. Gaze, 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 gaze. Keep your eyes on the fingers and cross over the front. So you're holding back onto the ankle. Take the bottom arm, that's the left arm now. Bring it all the way up to the sky looking to that top fingers and then sweep it over the head on the exhale so there's a grace and a fluidity to the movement almost like you are flying through the air keep going in the sequence bottom arm comes out and comes to the top moves all the way overhead and keep your eyes on the tips of your fingers don't lose contact keep going Take a few more rounds like this. You can go a little faster if you want to speed things up. You can go a little slower. Just check you're not gripping your toes and that you're not hanging out too deeply into the heels. You can keep the knees as bent as they need to be. It's not about length of hamstrings. Very nice. Let's take a couple more rounds. Okay, one more. Very nice. And then release the hands now onto the floor. Walk your feet perhaps a little closer in together now and come into a squat. Notice if your heels lift off of the floor when you come into the squat, you may want to support your blanket, which actually is really nice anyway, even if you have the contact. Take elbows into the inner knees, bring palm hands to touch. If this pose is kind of just not happening because it's a deep, intense hip opener, you could sit on a couple of your blocks to lift yourself up and to give yourself some extra support. Close the eyes here and have a sense that the heart is lifting and the tailbone is dropping. Notice the breath, the inhale, as it then turns into the exhale. The inhale, 
and the exhale. Take the hands now onto the floor, lift the hips and just come to an easy wide-legged forward fold. You can come off of the blanket and just gently kind of sweetly sway from side to side. And then take hands to hips, take a little bend to the knees and come up slowly, flat back. Very good. So we're going to turn the right foot out for the left foot in. I'm going to come into a warrior two pose, gazing down the middle finger of your warrior two pose. Good. You want your front knee roughly over your front ankle. And one day we want the top thigh to be parallel to the floor. That's where we're going with our warrior two. As you breathe in, find your spine rising. And as you breathe out, draw the navel to the spine to center you. On your next inhale, please straighten the leg and reach the front fingertips towards the front of your mat until you come into triangle pose. The bottom hand just rests gently below the knee or above the knee, depending on where you are in your body today. And the top arm, the palm curls to face the front of your mat. the same direction as the front toes. Now we're going to practice gracefully moving into Ardha Chandrasana half moon pose. Take the top hand onto the hip, bend the front knee and walk the back foot, pigeon toe it in a couple of paces and take that right hand just outside the pinky toe, bringing the back foot off of the ground, flexing the foot as soon as it leaves the ground to come into half moon Ardha Chandrasana. You can keep the top hand on the hip, or if you have the balance today, you can take the top hand, palm faces forward once more. Good, keep flexing that back foot, keep stacking the top hip over the left hip, over the right hip, excuse me. Mm. Great. Now we'll practice once more, bringing to mind that visual image of the starlings coming back into a warrior two. So take the top hand onto the hip, bend the standing leg and as gracefully as you can. And whether there's a stutter or a stumble, it's all good. Come back into warrior two. Straighten the front leg, turn those toes in, turning left toes out, coming into warrior two on the other side. Breathing in and breathing out. Gaze is down the middle finger once more, inhaling. Navel to spine on your exhale. Good. One more breath here in your two pose. Let's come into triangle, straightening the left leg this time, reaching, reaching, reaching as far as you can. When you can't reach anymore with those fingers, just allow the hand to fall naturally where it falls and the top arm comes up, creating a nice line along the bottom arm all the way up to the top arm. And again, the palm turns to the direction of the front foot. Draw your tailbone towards your back heel and keep the breath at the core. So each time you exhale, draw the belly button back home to the spine. This is great. Take the top hand onto the hip, bend the front knee, take the left hand just six to 12 inches outside and to the left of the pinky toes, walk the back foot in, remembering flex it the minute it comes off the floor and this gives you good stability and balance. When you're ready, take the top hand. If you're ready, take the top hand up. You can keep a little micro bend to the standing leg, but keep flexing that back foot, that's key. And when you're ready, bend the standing leg to come out. Top hand comes into the hip. We spend a moment briefly in warrior two, smiling. Windmill the arms all the way down for downward facing dog. Well done. Good. Inhale, come to a high plank. Come onto your knees, lower all the way down. Inhale to a cobra. Elbows hug into the ribs and then exhale back once more to downward facing dog. Walk the feet forwards now and we'll come to some seated sequences. 
So we'll take the right leg out and bring the left leg in. And you can sit on your blanket if you like to give yourself a little bit of a lift. In fact, I'm going to do that now. And then turn your torso so that it's completely facing the extended leg. Take your hands either side of the leg and inhale and lengthen. Think of this almost as a back bend. So we're lifting the back body first, the front body, excuse me, first, from pubic bone to belly button to heart. And then we're folding, creasing at the hips. We're inhaling and lengthening the front body. And then we are folding. So there's not too much rounding going on here. It's much more of an extension of, a, of an unfolding while we're folding, if that makes sense. And now as we come to a more stiller, grounded part of the practice, there is still movement. There is still that transition. As the breath moves in, as the breath gracefully moves out. Good, you can close the eyes, taking your awareness really inward now. Very nice, inhale to bring yourself all the way back up. And taking your bent leg over the extended leg, right over the other side of it. Uh, I'm actually gonna come off my blanket now, but you can see what feels nice in your body. Take your left hand all the way behind you, extend your right hand all the way up and hug in that knee as your first option to then rotate around. If that's um, available to you quite easily, you could hook the elbow over the knee. I'm gonna stay with hugging the knee for today. Inhale, feel yourself growing very tall here. And then gently close the eyes, keeping the chin in line with the center of the chest, so no owl heads here. We're not looking over the shoulder in this particular pose. And we're rotating at the center of the belly, the torso. Beautiful. Two more breaths here. Very nice, let's come back to center. And then let's cross over to the other leg. I'm gonna come this side with my blanket. So you're extending left leg, right leg folds in this time. Again, inhale, lift, lengthen the front body so it's as if there's a lifting up and back and then we can fold forwards. This extended leg, by the way, can be bent and you could take a block underneath or a rolled up blanket to support you in that. It doesn't need to be poker straight. One more breath, please, here. And keep returning the navel to spine on the exhale. Good. Inhale to bring yourself all the way back up. Crossing right knee over the left leg. Taking your hands. your right hand behind you, extending your left arm all the way up and press down into the ball of the right foot there as you hug the right knee in and rotate. Left side waist to right side waist. Great, let's come back to center and hook that leg and let's come to lie down now. So taking the soles of the feet onto the floor and you can just graze the heels with your fingertips. You can just gently touch them and the feet are parallel. 
Your hands are next to your hips with your palms facing down. Shoulders draw away from the ears. We're going to inhale and lift the hips and the hands at the same time, bringing the hands overhead, lifting the hips. And then we're going to exhale, slowly lower down with the hands and the hips coming to the floor simultaneously. So again, invite that graceful flow as you inhale and lift hands and hips up and overhead. And as you exhale and you lower down. Let's take one more like this, inhaling, coming up. Good, and exhaling and lowering down. Bring your arms to the side now. So you're making a T-shape with both arms and then lift your hips and slowly inch them over to the left and drop your knees over to the right. It's very casually, you don't really need to move the feet very much. And starting to now allow your body to drop into the earth, noticing gravity beginning to really take hold of your body. Allowing yourself to drop into a more restful place. And he'll come back to center. Lift your hips, inch them slightly over to the right and drop hips over to knees, excuse me, over to the left. You can keep your eyes closed now. We're moving into a Shavasana state of mind. Deep relaxation. And then now begin to come back to center. And you can extend your legs out, coming into Shavasana. Arms down by your side with a good distance from your torso. Feet allowing to flop open to the side. Shoulders draw back. Jaw slackens. Eyes close. And everything starts to relax and soften. We'll spend a couple of minutes here in Shavasana. If you wish to take a blanket to cover you, you may take a blanket to cover you. And allow yourself to be fully supported now by the earth, by the ground beneath you. And as much effort as you put into your practice, your fluid, graceful, poetic practice, uh, give yourself permission to put as much effort into now resting in stillness.
body is heavy. A sense of deep relaxation now, completely letting go. A softening, melting quality. Now slowly deepen your breath. Begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bring your knees to bend and into your chest and give yourself a warm, gentle hug. Perhaps you rock slightly from side to side. And then please roll onto one side using your arm as your pillow and just rest there for a couple of breaths. before bringing yourself back up to seated. And we'll close with some breath work. So I'm going to sit on the block here. You could sit on your blanket or however is comfortable to you. And let's take an inhalation once more from Valdemar essential oil. You can just breathe straight in from the bottle. Allowing that citrus uh, vibration of the fruit to awaken you, revive you. And then please now bring your hands all the way up overhead, making little cups with your hands and bringing your arms like a V shape. And we're going to do some Kapalabhati breathing which is a simple, short, sharp exhalation through the nose where we snap back the belly. So it looks a bit like this. The inhale takes care of itself, so you don't need to worry about that. And we're going to do a hundred. So let's go. stop and start that's fine you can stop and have a moment's pause you can go slower than I'm going but just join back in when you're able and with time and practice this becomes very uh, accessible to everyone so let's take the last few breaths be about 100 on your inhale deeply inhale bring the hands all the way up thumbs come to hook and suck in three more breaths through the mouth three more one last one hold it there at the top until you can't hold it anymore and then pop it like a cork and allow everything to release down your hands in your lap and close your eyes and just allow yourself now to have a quiet moment of meditation breathing in breathing out acknowledging the time that you gave to practice acknowledging the transformation i want to read a small section from young pueblo's book inward to you while you're breathing and sitting he says a body is a field of motion a field of moving energy and a system of information. As life continues its fluctuations, we tend to gather attachments, burdens and sorrows. We hold them so tightly that they become embedded in the body, causing blockages and disruptions in the flow of our system, which can limit access to the best possible version of ourselves. This sometimes manifests as ailments or diseases, as well as a lack of belief in our own power and a lack of understanding of the universe. When we use purifying healing techniques, the body begins releasing these knots of attachment, allowing our field of energy to return to balance and move more freely and powerfully. This causes changes in our body, not just physical changes, such as the healing of disease or ailments, but immaterial and internal changes as well, such as believing in oneself more 
the growth of love, the aspiration to grow into wisdom. Really, there is no separation between the mind and the body. They move together as one under the leadership of our mental contents. Please bring your hands into prayer, thumbs just resting gently at the center of your chest. Thank yourself for practicing. Thank yourself for showing up. And we give great thanks to all the teachers who have gone before us and who are to come. Thank you so much. Namaste.